Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. The newspaper business is in turmoil as readers and advertisers have shifted to digital platforms. Vermont papers have not been spared. Most are doing fine, but others are struggling or have closed down in recent years. To talk about the landscape of local community news, we've called on Corey Dawson, a reporter and editor of Community News Service, and Lisa Scagliotti, a veteran reporter and publisher who pivoted quickly to keep Waterbury's local news flowing. Welcome, Corey and Lisa. Thanks for having us. Hi, friend. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's terrific to have you with us. Um, so, Corey, we're going to start with you with a little bit of a big picture. How would you summarize the state of print journalism in Vermont right now? Uh, it's still going, not nearly as well as it has been for the past you know, several decades, over 100 some odd years. Um, you know, there have been uh, many closures. Uh, by some measure, Vermont has lost well over 100 reporters in the past 20, 30 years. Uh, and looking at a national scale, it's, it's similar around the country. Um, some studies have shown that, that we've lost over 20,000 reporters around the country. So Vermont's not been spared from this carnage, really. Right, and, and, and what, so what's needed now most to keep local news coming and uh, alive and vibrant? Money and community support. Uh, money is very obvious. Uh, the, the industry and the, the, the economic underpinnings of, of a lot of these newspapers have really been, have been stripped away um, by, by major internet companies that have taken advertising business out from underneath them and the classifieds business. Uh, but also needs you know strong civic minded people to contribute to their local papers people who want to both work for them perhaps in a volunteer basis or in a, as a contributor basis but also people need to um, pay for news as well all right so this pay and and also the reporters since you've made it very clear how many we've lost so corey as, as editor of community news news service it's a project of the university of vermont tell us about that service and and how it works Sure. So it's about three years old uh, this this semester. Uh, Lisa and I are the only two editors of this program, um, and we, we match UVM undergrads with uh, the, a lot of these small local newspapers around the state, including the Waterbury Roundabout, and we help them uh, put out the news report every every week, every month. Uh, they these students are writing, you know, stories about their local select board, stories about their local sports teams. Um, community events, profiles, um, anything that we can do to really support the, the journalism that's happening, happening on the ground. So it's a great experience for students, but it also um, helps bring them into the fold and get students really on the ground experience and, and shows them, you know, how the, how the sausage is made, so to speak. Yeah, fantastic, and, and that's right. So, so Lisa, you were also the editor before Cor Corey came in of this service. Um, is this for UVM students only? Uh, you know, you're, you're teaching a course now just on the basics of, uh, of journalism. Can anybody take that, um, uh, th this course? I think it's, it's full up right now, but you're hoping to offer it again. Tell us about that course. Yeah, the, so we had the the first session of it last night, actually, and it was it was well attended. We had people from as far away as Newport come to 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 learn about the basics of, of journalism and and how they can contribute to their local papers. Um, this is really for anybody. Uh, there should be no barrier to entry. Um, really, to 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 you shouldn't have it have to have a degree to mm -hmm. to start. Um, working in journalism, but um, I wanted to kind of give people the the basic underpinnings, the the ethics that people should know when they're writing uh, news for for a general audience, and get them you know interested in writing you know stories that help their local papers. Terrific. So um, uh, we we will also have a, a website that people can go to if they're interested in, in that course. So I'd like to turn to Lisa um, Scagliotti. She is a, a veteran journalist and editor. She's worked for the Burlington Free Press and the Anchorage Daily News. And when her hometown newspaper folded, she jumped to create a new entity for Waterbury. It's called the Waterbury Roundabout. Share the short version of this remarkable story of, of creating this online uh, news service. Sure. Um, well, essentially, it was a class project. Um, you know, it was the beginning of the pandemic, March 2020, um, that we all remember. Um, and the, the shutdown happened in mid-March. And two weeks later, the Waterbury Record was our newspaper, our weekly paper here in Waterbury for, oh, uh, about 13 years. And um, they just 
they folded. Uh, there was no advance warning. The newspaper came out and they said, this is going to be our last edition. And it just sort of sent this shockwave through the community. Already everybody was reeling with all the, the new things that were happening with the shutdown, trying to understand the pandemic. And to have the newspaper just stop um, was a really big shock to the community. And at the time I was in the seat that Corey's in now as the editor at the community news service, working with um, a group of UVM students who were covering local news for other newspapers. Um, and so, you know, we just said, well, what if we turn some of our attention to Waterbury? Um, and at the time, you know, it really didn't matter what we were covering. You know, we, we were just trying to have the students busy, um, especially at that point where um, everything was up in the air. Um, and so we, we had students launch the website. They designed the website um, that we had students start um, helping covering stories. Um, the timing was a little hard because we, we launched in May. The first week of May was when the website went, went live. Um, and the semester was just about over. So then we had a, a few weeks there of this lull of trying to figure it out. But then once the summer students began, um, Corey came on board and um, in the fall and we, we started working where um, they were helping me out with a, a couple students at a time. And I have, um, I was able to, you know, with my own connections and, and you know, other friends in the business, I have, I'm lucky that I have, um, I know a lot of folks and I was able to get other journalists who had time, um, who were able to freelance for me to help um, one of my partners in this um, project is Gordon Miller, who's a local photographer, who is the main mm. photographer for the Waterbury Record and still shoots for the Stowe Reporter. Um, and so he's a lot of his photos are what you see on our website that make it look so good. Right. Well, how, how wonderful and what a great experience for the students also to help start this up. Why is having hyper local news source so important? Well, people need to know what's going on in their town. Um, and when, it, you know, when I started in Vermont journalism back in the late 80s, um, the landscape was so different. The Burlington Free Press, which is where I started there um, in Vermont, um, had, a, had a huge staff and it, and it covered, you know, all the communities in Chittenden County. Um, the Times Argus, the Rutland Herald, they were covering the counties around them, you know, and, and going to select board meetings and covering all that local news. And as they've cut back, that local news coverage has disappeared. You know, and so you see things trying to fill that void, like Front Porch Forum and, um, you know, blogs and things like that. But, you know, there's so many, we're, we're sort of in this ocean of information right now on the internet, but where can people find out what the school board vote was on something last night? You know, we had a special bond, uh, bond vote in Waterbury in our Harwood school district um, in November. Um, and so where were people supposed to wake up the next day to find out, did the bond pass? Hmm. Um, you know, there's, there's nobody covering it at that level. Um, and so that's still the information that people need that, that, you know, to understand what's happening in their community and to connect people in a community. Absolutely. So, so the roundabout is, is a digital news source, um, but you also have a paper version that, that some of your articles come out in. T tell us about that. Yeah, um, well, this is a special partnership. So one of the things that, that I've learned really quickly um, is that I can't do this alone, right? So the whole idea of launching this with the University of Vermont program, like there's one partnership. Um, and then um, started this this website. Um, and then soon into this, the folks at the Times Argus came to us and they said, we're looking to try to expand our reach. They had, had contracted a lot at the beginning of the pandemic as well. And so they came to us as they're trying to get back on their feet um, during the pandemic, and they said they were going to launch a free weekly newspaper that was going to be mailed to our community. Mm. But they saw what our website was doing and said, you know, we are imagining just sending out something that has, you know, Times Argus content. But if you're covering your town and your community, what if we put, you know, relevant stories in the papers that are going to your zip codes because it gets um, distributed through the mail. Um, and so that's basically been the way that we answered the question that everyone gave us when we first started was, this website is nice, but what about a paper? Um, when are you going to give us a paperback? And I would tell them, you know, if a paper was, was viable, you'd still have the Waterbury record. Uh, so give me a chance here, right? right. <laughs> um, so the, the fact that the Times Argus was willing to do that was huge. And so, you know, we once a week, people in their mailboxes get what's called the Waterbury Reader. Mm -hmm. um, it's little, it's it's not the size that the Waterbury record used to be. It's eight pages. Um, I worked in weekly newspapers with the, the Stowe uh, Vermont Community News Group before the pandemic. So I, I'm familiar with the, the whole weekly news cycle. And so, you know, that's been the way that we've been able to meet our readers where they are. You know, we have people that, that are on our website 
and get our weekly newsletter that's an email but then there's also people who really appreciate getting this in their mailbox every week well, what um, has the you know the reaction been in in waterbury has it changed the way locals think about the importance of journalism well i think I, I don't know how much of it's changed how they think, but I think it was a big shock to see something, you know, you don't know what you have until it's gone kind of thing where the, the newspaper disappeared and all of a sudden people are like, well, how are we supposed to, especially at the beginning of the pandemic, how are we supposed to let people know about all these things that were changing at that point, mm -hmm. you know, businesses that were shifting and pivoting and there were all sorts of messages from town government and lots of, you know, lots of information that needed to get out to people and they didn't know where to go. So I feel like you know, giving them a central place where they can go for information um, was really important. Um, I have to say that we also, um, we, I also work with WDEV where I, mm. I, I talk with the folks at WDEV every week, you know, and starting to realize that, you know, when I first started in this business in the late eighties, we sort of looked at each other as competitors, you know, other news outlets were, were your competition. And at this point, I feel like we're really all in this together. You know, and, and to whatever degree we can collaborate and we can work together. Um, I talk with the editor at the Valley Reporter, you know, a couple times a week, um, putting out the weekly paper over there. We cover the same school district, you know, and so there there has to be a little bit more of this, you know, the, the local news media, you know, hmm. knitting things together to be able to provide this information and, and, and help each other out. It's a very different landscape and, 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 and we only have a few seconds left. So if you'd like to learn more, there are websites for both the Community News Service and the Waterbury Roundabout. You can go to communitynews.net to learn more about that service or uh, waterburyroundabout.org. Um, Corey and Lisa, uh, thank you so much for, for coming on and giving us a, a, a little bit. I know there's so much more we can talk about in funding and, and, and other things. So um, hopefully, maybe, maybe we'll get you both back on. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Fran. Thanks a lot. You bet. And thank you for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Stay well.